Hi. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm Camille and this is Kim with Kim. This is the CXC C6 chemistry paper 2 from May June 2023. And we're zooming in on question 4. Sulfur and magnesium are two elements in the same period of the periodic table. The different properties of the oxides of these elements are presented in table 2. All right, so we have the oxide of sulfur. It's a gas, that's the state. The melting point is negative 72 degrees Celsius. And for the oxide of, mag the oxide of magnesium, it's a solid. And the melting point is 2,852. Whoa, that's a lot. That requires a lot of energy. Now, with reference to bonding, explain the difference in melting point between the oxides of sulfur and magnesium. So we're going to be talking about the bonding that's there. Don't want to get too much into the structure. It's hard to talk about the, the bonding without talking about the structure, but we want to be very disciplined so we can get our full marks. So let's just go. So for the oxides of sulfur, these are covalent compounds and they have covalent bonds. So you could say the intramolecular bond is covalent. Each molecule though is joined to another by weak intermolecular forces of attraction. As a result of this, because we have weak intermolecular forces of attraction, very little energy, very little energy is required to break these molecules from these forces of attraction, holding them together in the solid state. So they have very low melting point, low melting point of negative 72 degrees Celsius. Now for the magnesium oxide, this is an ionic compound. They have ionic ones present, and these arise from very strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the cations and the anions. The forces require lots of energy to break, well, to break them apart, to break them apart when they're in the solid state. So 
magnesium has melting point of 2852, or we could say a high melting point. That should give us our six marks. Part two of 4A. Explain whether the oxides of sulfur and the magnesium will conduct electricity, and if so, under what conditions? All right, so let's just tell them. So the oxides of sulfur, So the oxides of sulfur will not conduct electricity under any condition. Now these are covalent compounds. So that's that straight up. No ions are present. No ions are present there. Nothing, nothing to carry a current if we were to apply a voltage. No magnesium, the oxide of magnesium. So MgO, MgO. All right, so we'd need to say here that for magnesium oxide, it will conduct electricity when molten, as at that time the ions are set free and can move and carry a current if a voltage is applied. Now, we need not say if it's molten because uh, magnesium oxide is not soluble in water. All right, and we need not to go into the details here. You probably need to look back over your solubility of um, your oxides. So magnesium oxide is insoluble in water. So we need not, to, need not talk about um, when it's dissolved in aqueous medium. This is enough right here for the four marks. Okay, so part B for the win. Figure four is a partial diagram of the apparatus. A group of students intend or, or propose to use to investigate whether ethanol, aqueous ammonia, and aqueous lead to nitrate would conduct electricity. So part one, complete the diagram in the figure four in order to make it a circuit that is suitable for achieving the aim of this experiment. So we have the battery and they're showing us the positive terminal. They're showing us um, electrode A connected to the positive terminal, B connected to the negative terminal. So what we did know is a, uh, some sources will say it's a cell, or some will just say it's a container. So we just would need that to be present and we'd need to have our electrolyte. So our electrodes must be immersed into the electrolyte or not the electrolyte, whatever the liquid we're testing to see if it's an electrolyte. If it's an electrolyte, then it will conduct. So we would put our ethanol in the container then at another time, or aqueous ammonia, and at another time, or aqueous lead to nitrate. So we've done that. So part two now, that, that should give us the two marks. So we could state that we're putting the liquid here. Liquid to be tested. And what we would need as well, we would need since this is all we have, we could put in a, a lamp that would glow, of course, if we um, get if we get um, current passing. That's if the liquid is if the liquid conducts electricity. So they want us to know classify the three liquids given as conductors or non-conductors. No, um, our knowledge of you know we, what you call this? No weak acid, weak bases should chip in. But they said conductors are non-conductors. So even if it's a weak base or a weak acid, we don't have any weak acid here. Once we'll get conduction occurring, we'd have to classify the substance as a conductor. We can't say weak conductor. It's just a conductor or a non-conductor. So we'll start with the most, well, obvious one, conductors. Aqueous lead nitrate would be a conductor. So we would put that here. The other thing that will conduct, aqueous ammonia. 
and then our non conductor will be ethanol. That will give us the other three marks to top it up to 15. How are you faring so far? Leave a comment. Did you get this right? What did you put for this? What do you have for your answer here? And just like that, we've come to the end of this session. Remember, if you find value, if you found value, um, like, share, and consider subscribing. No, couple later. <laughs>